sure. Yeah. Good evening. I'd like to call the March 17, 2011 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Planning Board to order. I want to start by recognizing and welcoming our new planning board member, Richard Olfeen, who is with us for his first meeting tonight. The first item on our agenda is the minutes of the previous meeting. Do I have a motion? We have a motion to accept the meeting, the minutes as they are. Second. Moved by Jim Hugner and seconded by Carol Ann Jordan. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Minutes pass. The first agenda item tonight is on our consent agenda. And I just wanted to review briefly what that means. If the planning board determines that we do not need any discussion of the item, then it remains on the consent agenda. And we will go ahead and vote on that after we hear the applicant's presentation. There's something a little bit new for a consent agenda item tonight. Because of some fairly recent amendment to our planning board rules and procedures, the public is invited to speak on any item on the agenda. This is not a, an official public hearing, but the public nonetheless will have an opportunity to speak. And procedurally, it will operate essentially the same way that we operate when we have a public hearing, which means that if a member of the public would like to speak, they come forward to the podium, give their name and address, and have approximately um, three minutes to address the issue. As I said, this is a new procedure, uh, a, a new public participation opportunity, so we're going to try out this particular method for doing it. If a member of the public wishes to speak, that does not mean that the item must be removed from the consent agenda. So after the planning board hears the applicant and hears any members of the public who would like to speak, we will decide if the planning board would like to have a discussion. And if we would like to have a discussion, it will be removed from the consent agenda. And if not, we will go forward with a vote. So with that, is there someone here representing Rudy's of the Cape on the site plan approval extension? Rudy's of the Cape is requesting a one-year extension of the site plan approval granted for the restaurant located at 517 Ocean House Road, section 1994, site plan review procedures. Thank you, Madam Chairman, uh, members of the board. Uh, my name is Pat Carroll. I'm with Carroll Associates in Portland. I'm a Cape resident, and I've been involved with uh, Mary Page and Rudy's for a couple of years now. Um, as you know, or many of you know, I guess there's quite a few f new faces on the board here tonight, but um, just about a year ago, I think it was a year ago yesterday, um, we were uh, before the board and the board granted approval of a site plan application uh, that would uh, uh, entail renovation of, and expansion of the building to accommodate an 80-seat 80, 80 restaurant and associated site development. Um, we were we were approved then, and um, at the time, um, it was it was understood that that uh, we were going to start work and try to get work done before the summer season. And uh, Mary has a tenant in there that's actually running the uh, restaurant operation at this point in time, and um, because of some other delays, uh, we weren't able to get started on construction. And he really didn't want construction to happen, kind of while he while he was uh, operating uh, just out of fear of losing business and so forth. So um, his lease is up the end of September. And at that point in time, uh, Mary is prepared to kind of move forward on her renovation plans. And um, with the idea being that she would hopefully be open for business by the first of the year. So that's kind of the, the, the approach at the time. Um, and so because of that, we're asking for a one-year extension on the approval uh, so that we can get this work done this fall rather than um, last summer. Thank you. 
Is there any member of the public who would like to speak on this item? My name is Gail Schneider, 511 Ocean House Road. Um, I followed the Rudy's procedure from day one, I think. And um, I have continued to have concern about the entertainment component, the outside entertainment that's um, in as part of this plan. And I'd just like to make it public that I do continue to have a concern about that because of the proximity to neighbors. And I felt that the discussion of the planning board when this was approved really didn't come to a, a good conclusion as far as monitoring the noise level. Um, so I would um, ask you to consider amending this and looking further into the entertainment outside. I have absolutely no problem with entertainment inside. And the rest of the plan looks very nice. I'm an abutting neighbor, and I'm in favor of all of it. It's just the outside entertainment that um, would be certainly impactful on our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? Okay, at this point, the public comment period is closed. Um, does anyone on the planning board wish to have a discussion of this request from the applicant? Seeing no hands on that, the uh, item remains on the consent agenda. Would anyone like to make a motion? Be it, order, <clears throat> excuse me, be it ordered that, based on the request submitted and the facts presented, the request of Rudy's of the Cape, located at 517 Ocean House Road, for a one-year extension of the planning board approval granted March 16, 2010, for an 80-seat restaurant be approved with an extension to March 17, 2012. We have a second. Second. Okay. So, any, so we have no discussion on the item. Motion made by Jim Huber and seconded by Henry Steinberg. All in favor? Any opposed? The, case, the motion carries uh, unanimously. There are six of us here tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the Roosters Zoning Ordinance Amendment. The Planning Board will hold a second public hearing on amendments to regulate roosters, including establishing a minimum lot size of 40,000 square feet to keep a rooster, and a recommendation to amend other ordinances to address noise, Section 19.10.2, Zoning Ordinance Amendment. This is a public hearing item. Is there any member of the public here who wishes to speak on this proposed amendment. Uh, Jody Jordan, now on the farm, Cape Elizabeth, 83 Old Ocean House Road. If the town wants to keep this a rural character for farming and fishing, there's enough regulations now it's making it hard enough to make a living. I don't think you need to make any more regulations on roosters, especially. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Beth Angle. I live at Three Young Lane, um, Cape Elizabeth. Um, I wanted to speak on the Rooster issue, you said two things. One is that you're thinking of a um, nuisance ordinance and the other a limiting of the lot size. On the nuisance thing, if you're treating it, uh, if you add roosters to the same category as barking dogs, which I think is where they should be, um, then that seems to be something that would work. It seems to me there's been two complaints in the last year and a half or so about roosters, maybe three, 
all of which were resolved between neighbors the same way you'd resolve an issue with a barking dog. I think if you add dogs to, I mean, uh, roosters to the same nuisance ordinance that governs loud motorcycles and barking dogs, you will solve your problem. Um, if there is a problem at the moment, I don't think there is anybody really opposed to roosters, but, um, or any complaints that are, that are out there that haven't been resolved between neighbors. Um, the idea of limiting people to having to have 40,000 square feet in order to have a rooster, I think is the slippery slope. I, I really think that that's the beginning of limiting other livestock in Cape Elizabeth. Geese are louder than roosters, so the, your geese will be going next, and ducks, and anything that someone has non-commercially on a smaller lot. Um, you start with roosters, and you're going to end up with a couple of big farms and nothing else. Um, I think that people need to understand that people just don't keep roosters because they like to hear them crow. They keep them because they're, they're a heritage animal. We started with my daughter, went to 4-H, saw a bantam rooster, and got interested in livestock. She got a bantam rooster, which we could have had on a quarter acre, a half acre. It wouldn't have mattered. She joined 4-H and then got interested in another kind of 4-H. <coughs> It brought her into the agriculture community. And I'm really worried that we're headed away from encouraging our children to be in agriculture. If she hadn't had that little bantam and showed it at 4-H, then she wouldn't have gotten into dairy 4-H, where she leases animals out of our town because there's not enough land here. She wouldn't be going to Washington, D.C. She wouldn't be in the secretary of a 4-H club, and she wouldn't be one of the people that our town is bringing to agriculture. And I think there's a lot of children like that. Every day I get a call, can I come over and see your animals? If you encourage that and you nurture that, even on a small lot, you're gonna end up with a kid that's studying biomass, that's studying geothermal. But if you start limiting your livestock and the interest that people can have in that in your own town, you guys are gonna lose that and you're going to get the kids from South Portland. You can't have any animals except for a couple of chickens. So I think you need to be careful, and I think that you shouldn't legislate something because of a couple of complaints that can be solved, I think, with, with a nuisance ordinance. So that's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? <coughs> Hi, I'm Penny Jordan. Um, I live at 349 Fowler Road. I'm one of the owners of Jordan's Farm in Cape Elizabeth and chair of the Cape Farm Alliance. And um, when I initially uh, had heard about uh, uh, neighborhood issues with roosters, it really comes down to noise. Because if you think about uh, roosters, and you think about uh, roosters before they start making noise, uh, there are people who would purchase them in order to have them as a food source. And so we need to think about as we are looking at creating ordinances that we don't want to create ordinances that limit the ability for people to create food sources. So if the issue is noise, then deal with noise. Um, and therefore, I'm a proponent of addressing the issue through uh, a nuisance ordinance and have that be the solution because roosters are food sources and uh, we need to continually think about um, promoting even small scale agriculture in our community. Thanks. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak? No one else? All right, the public hearing is now closed. Anyone on the board wish to address this issue? As I said, we've had a couple of public hearings on this already and several discussions. 
But anyone have anything further they'd like to add tonight? Victoria. We have had a lot of discussions, and um, just for the public record, just so I, mean, I know you didn't, not everyone came to every single meeting that we had, um, the reason I support the proposed zoning ordinance to establish a minimum 40,000 square foot lot size in which to keep the roosters is because the amendment will have no effect on our local commercial farms. The amendment does not impinge on the state of Maine's right to farm statute nor its definition of farm and farm operation which are entities and operations associated with commercial production. And in Cape Elizabeth, commercial farms operate on lots containing more than 100,000 square feet, which is a little about two and a half acres. The amendment also addresses the real concerns and letters that we've heard from the public and testimony from residents requesting regulation of roosters in neighborhood settings where homes can be tightly clustered on lots that are 40,000 square feet or less. I support the recommendation to the Town Council because the Disturbing the Peace Ordinance does not address or apply to roosters, as it reads, no person shall make, continue, or cause to be made any loud, profane, boisterous, unnecessary, unusual noises to disturb, injure, and endanger the peace and safety of others. And also in his email from December 23, 2010, Police Chief Neil Williams agreed that this section does not relate to a rooster disturbing the peace. And also the dog ordinance regarding barking and howling. It also does not address or apply to roosters. And in that same email, Chief Williams noted, this section deals solely with dogs disturbing the peace and not other animals. Therefore, enforcement on controlling roosters would not be by the police department. So the proposed zoning ordinance amendment provides citizens who live on compact residential neighbors, neighborhoods a proactive solution while disturbing the peace recommendation offers a means of redress not previously available. But most importantly, I support it because neither of these recommendations adversely impact our local commercial farms. Anyone else? Jim. And as Victoria said, we have had many discussions on this, and I've consistently taken the opposite tact of Victoria. I think it's an un unnecessary regulation. It will not necessarily solve the noise problem. I want to use Alewives Farm as an example. Uh, being there many times, you've got his chickens and turkeys right on the property line. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jody. And uh, he's got many acres, and you could still have complaints from his neighbor, even though he has, would have m more than 40,000 square feet. And... Uh, you could have neighbors complaining because it's right on the property line. So I know we've been over this many times. Um, so I just think it's one more regulation that's, that's not necessary and takes away from the rural character of Cape Elizabeth. I know. And as far as commercial farmers like Jody's farm, he is protected from nuisance laws. That doesn't mean you won't get complaints, though, about the, the noise. But then the police can let them know that our commercial farmers, and rightly so, are protected from nuisance. Yeah, but as, uh, I can't remember your name, um, Beth. Beth, it's a slippery slope, and I think it's, we'll continue to uh, disagree on this. We will agree to disagree on this. Anyone else wish to make a comment? Carol Ann. In our many discussions, Jim and I have been on the, the side of noise ordinance as a means of addressing this issue. Um, and Victoria has very strenuously defended her position on the 40,000 square feet. Um, so I, I've wrestled with this a lot in which way to go, but one thing I'd like to do is see it move forward. So I'm I really think it needs to move to the town council and, uh, we, and further, further option, opportunities to address it will be, be at the council level. Anyone else? Madam Chairman, I obviously was not part of any of the previous discussions, meetings, so I, I must be honest and plead some ignorance as to what the positions of other people have been. Um, I guess my immediate question is, what is the problem? Well, you've had a couple, a couple complaints over the last year or two, I guess, of a neighbor 
I guess I'm trying to think of the only one I can remember, and it did get resolved um, neighbor to neighbor, as I understand it. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and the, the offending rooster all of a sudden was not there one day, as I remember. So uh, that's how that particular incident was resolved, but I think it also generated the, this whole thing. Uh, I don't know if he sent a letter. I don't remember how it all started. We have a lot of background on that. I, I was hoping not to get into that again tonight. Um, we did have a member of the public, though, at least one, who, who even after the situation was resolved, um, spoke. And actually, it's one of the interesting things about having numerous opportunities for public comment. Um, in one of our public hearings, the only person who appeared and spoke was uh, a neighbor who was quite adamantly against having roosters in these smaller, more compact neighborhoods and spoke for quite a long time. Tonight, we have only the other's point of view represented. Um, so I think no one particular hearing, I think, is representative of, of all of the opinions that are, are there. Maureen, you may have more detail. Well, you did ask the question. Um, I have a memo from the town manager to the planning board. The Cape Elizabeth Town Council last evening referred to the planning board a suggestion that the town should consider the status of roosters in Cape Elizabeth. I attached a letter received from a citizen on this topic. And this was from August 10, 2010. And there's a letter here from John and Deborah Malley saying, I will not read the whole letter. Um, I am writing to request that the town of Cape Elizabeth consider the creation of an ordinance banning roosters in residential areas. So, as someone who is talking about, it sounds trivial and almost comical unless you are the one being awakened by a crowing rooster at 4 a.m. or earlier, 50 feet from your bedroom window. There's another letter from uh, Robert Chatfield, also dated August 17, 2010. Um, I am writing regard to the proposed rooster ordinance. I had the unfortunate experience of living adjacent to a rooster in a residential neighborhood in Cape Elizabeth and was very surprised to learn our town had nothing in place to deal with it. He goes on for a whole page. I can read it all if you want, or I can skip over it. Uh, there was another letter received from Steve Sullivan, August 14, 2010. I own two homes on Beacon Lane and two lights. Recently, a neighbor decided she would start raising chickens on her property. Um, He's asking for input because he would like the roosters regulated. And then there is Gib and Sherry Mendelson. And Mr. Mendelson also came to a planning board public hearing. Also, this is a letter he wrote dated August 14, 2010, where, to paraphrase him, um, not pleased at being awake in one morning at 3.12 a.m. with 10 crows from the rooster, followed by eight crows at 3.40 a.m. So there definitely were some people who have brought their issues to the town council, and that's why the town council referred it to the planning board, and that's why we're here tonight. Thank you. I think it's also useful at this point to review a bit what happens after our decision tonight. The planning board cannot on its own make any ordinance amendment. We've been asked to make a recommendation back to the planning board. You mean the town council? The, the, the town council, that's right. We will then send to the town council a memorandum summarizing our recommendation and the input that we have had. The town council will then most likely refer the matter to their ordinance committee, and the public will again have the opportunity to discuss the matter in that forum. So I think it's important for any of you folks here or members of the public who continue to be interested in this issue to understand that in some ways the process uh, of public input begins again with the town council and it, it's important to continue to provide your input into that process. So this is really just an interim step to refer it from the planning board with our recommendation back to the town council. Does anyone want to make a motion? Victoria. Be it ordered that, based on the materials submitted and the facts presented, the attached amendment to the zoning ordinance establishes a minimum 40,000 square foot lot to keep a rooster be recommended to the Town Council for adoption. 
It further ordered that the planning board recommends that the disruption of the peaceful, quiet enjoyment of property that may be caused by roosters may be more appropriately addressed with amendments to section 12-1-1, disturbing the peace, and section 7-1-4, dog ordinance. Do I have a second? Oh, Maureen? I suspect that there are some people who may want to vote on the first, on, differently on the first versus the second motion. You may want to just vote on one at a time. We could do it that way. It's, it's whatever the chair would like, that's fine. Sure, let's do that. So you want to just do the, move the first let's, yep, the part? First motion. Do I have a second for the first part of the motion, the amendment to the zoning ordinance? Can I second? I'll second it then. So moved by Victoria Bolet filed. Bolet? Bolet, okay. And seconded by Elaine Fallander. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed. Okay, so that, that motion fails. A vote two in favor and three against. That was the portion of the motion relating to the zoning ordinance. And one? I am abstaining. I, I don't have enough information, Madam Chairman, to make any voting decision tonight. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second motion? relating to the disturbing the peace and dog ordinance part. Carol Ann. Motion for the board to consider. Be it ordered that the planning board recommends that the dis disruption of the peaceful, quiet, and enjoyment of property that may be caused by roosters may be more appropriately addressed with amendments to section 12-1-1, disturbing the peace, and section 7-1-4, dog ordinance. Do I have a second? Victoria. Okay. Any discussion on this part of the matter? All in favor? Opposed? And abstention again? Yes. Okay, so four in favor, one opposed, and one abstention. So I believe we're finished with that item. That is the last item on our agenda tonight. So do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. Second. <laughs> okay, all in favor. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.